Still Wakes the Deep is a psychological horror that released on Xbox Game Pass the other week. And wow, I'm blown away by this game and its story. The game takes place on an oil rig based in Scotland around September 1995, and there's a significant amount of upsets across all of the staff. The man we play as goes by the name of Kaz McCleary, an electrician aboard an oil rig that was only there for a very specific reason. He, as of a few months before, was home with his wife Suze and his two children, however made the decision to come out to the oil rig in an attempt to escape something that happened at home. These are the types of games that I love to be surprised by, because you can tell that the story had a significant amount of time and effort put into it to make it what it is. The characters were all very likeable and, most importantly, really, really real. Many horrors or thrillers that release don't really give off the same vibe or aura that Still Wake the Deep has. And to be honest, I think that mostly comes down to the voice acting. The voice acting in this game was tremendous. Absolutely fantastic. I've got to say, some of the best voice acting I've heard in a video game for a very, very long time. And they get across the panic, the horror, the mystery of this thing perfectly. Whilst also being Scottish, having that bit of banter to try and make a light of what is a really terrible situation. I personally think this game needs to be nominated for something at the next game show because it was absolutely fantastic and I was immersed from the get-go and I sat through and played the entirety of the story from start to finish without putting it down. I was gripped the whole way through. You're not walking around picking up random machine guns, weapons to fight back against these things you don't know what they are. You have nothing to protect yourself in this instance other than running away from whatever those things are, chasing you and hiding if you can. This is a very real feeling game, and one that if this ever did happen, and you are stuck on an oil rig with this thing you've just drilled into, like, this is exactly how you would expect people to react. It's a story of loss, shock, and horror. It didn't just scare me with what was going on visually, but sound design was also top tier in this game. If you haven't played Still Wakes the Deep, I would recommend you go to Xbox Game Pass right now on PC or Xbox and play this game. It's a 10 out of 10 for me and it was fantastic the entire time. This, however, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of Still Wakes the Deep, a game that I will treasure for a long, long time and praise to the high heavens. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. But without further ado, let's get straight into the story explained. I still can't believe you went. What are you thinking? Going to that place. Wish you hadn't got yourself into this mess, but you did. And you can't run forever. I know you were just trying to do right by me, so I need you to do what's right by us now. Please, Kaz. I am so tired of fighting. I just want it to be over. Home. The girls want you home, but if you don't deal with this, then we are done for good. I love you. I love you wait forever. Jesus. Jesus, Sus. Girls need you a Christmas card. <laughs> Christmas. Kaz is all the way out here on an oil rig whilst his wife Suze and two daughters are all the way back home. Kaz escaped what was going on in his life back on shore for a reason we don't really know too much about as of right now in the story. But he didn't come out here as an experienced person on an oil rig. This isn't his job. He's an electrician. But he came out here to avoid whatever was happening back on shore and to put his knowledge of electrics to use somewhere far, far away from his problems. The first character we meet, however, was named Finley. She was an engineer aboard the rig and begins to talk about how the rig is falling to pieces. They've only just started drilling into the sea floor, and Davy Rennick, who is the manager of the rig, is said to be cutting corners. He also received a message from the shore this morning, one that involves Kaz and the police, 
and he's not impressed by it. The whole of the crew were unimpressed by the working conditions and the way that they were being treated aboard this rig called the Bearer. Industrial action has also been taken by many, many employees and at the expense of this, the board have eliminated all Christmas bonuses for the staff. Kaz makes his way to the canteen to talk with Roy. Roy is a chef aboard the rig, but is also his best friend and the godfather to his two daughters. You can tell that these two are very close just by the conversations that they're having and Roy is very much involved and is knowledgeable about what happened back on shore and the reason why Kaz is here. However, suddenly on the tannoy, Rennick calls for Kaz to report to his office immediately. Kaz, however, gets personal with Roy here. Susan Cow's relationship took a rocky turn, and she mentioned divorce in a previous argument that they had. Someone back home named Billy Chamberlain got into a heated exchange with Kaz as he started slagging off Suze. And well, Kaz didn't hesitate in showing him that speaking about her in that way is not on, so he basically bashed his head in and got the police involved. Kaz could face serious jail time because of this incident. So, to get away from that, that's why he left Susan the two kids, and Roy told him to come aboard this oil rig to get away from it all for a little while until things calm down. Before we go to Rennick, however, we have a word with a couple of our colleagues across the canteen to see what the overall vibe is like there. Around this part of Scotland, there'll be dozens of these oil rigs all around us by this time next year. The Beera, which is the name of the rig that we're currently on, is almost completely out of oil in their dig spot. So, more and more rigs are going to be built by foreign companies in order to try and get as much money out of Scotland as they can. And, well, that's going to start to make this rig a massive hazard. This is why workers are taking industrial action to try and fight back against these corporations taking Scotland's oil. But not only this, the conditions of this place are ropey, dangerous and are not fit for purpose. The rig is down to a skeleton staff as it is due to the industrial action that's being taken. So it's becoming more and more dangerous. Kaz also speaks with Brody and Ash. This is his first solo dive and Ash is really feeling it. But anyway, Kaz moves outside onto the deck of the rig. And as typical Scottish weather would say, it's cold, it's hammering it down and the sea is as choppy as ever. Kaz made his way up to Rennick's office and, well, received a warm welcome as he entered. Oh, I'm fine, Stan. The ship your ass in that chair, you fucking liability. But Rennick was angry at Kaz for bringing the police to his door after he'd received a letter from the shore from the police talking about Kaz being aboard the rig. However, the phone rings mid-conversation and it was Gibbo. He was trying to tell Rennick that they found something whilst they were drilling underwater and they didn't know how to proceed. However, Rennick wants things done now and fast. As we said, he cuts corners and he's on a tight schedule. So he orders them to keep drilling without even asking or knowing what it is they're drilling into. After a sarcastic comment made after the phone call, Rennick fired Kaz and told him to leave the rig now. Kaz made his way onto the helipad when suddenly... An explosion in the background caused a colleague, Gregor, to fall. And well, when the second one happened, Kaz fell also. Christ, but you're a right pair. Two bars and a ball bag. Now listen, Pat, I promise I'll take care of him. During this time, Kaz passed out and would have visions into his past. Roy, the chef, was of course close to Kaz as we'd said and Suze offshore. Roy was talking to Suze about Kaz's altercation with Billy Chamberlain. Roy knew some. Roy knew someone that was friends with Billy and tried to sweeten him up to prevent him from pressing charges, but it didn't work. The re this was the reason why Kaz went out to the rig with Roy to try and let things settle down. Kaz was pulled out of the sea by Brody and woke up a short time later. He headed outside and well, Brody was stood screaming his name. Raffs, a diver, was stuck inside a dive pod, going absolutely crazy inside. Brody, however, would look to release him, 
whilst we made our way back inside. However, the rig wasn't the same after those two explosions. There was a huge growth up and around the drill that just didn't seem natural, almost like something from another world. And the closer that we got to this growth, it would impact our mind, making us see things that weren't there. As we made our way through the rig, Kaz hears noises, noises that didn't sound human. What the hell did they drill into? We come across Finley whilst down here, and she tells us that she found Gibbo, and, well, he wasn't himself. After the explosion, something had got onto him, he freaked out, and even went for Finley. He's now completely changed, and we find that out for ourselves. Stay away! Kaz finds the bodies of all of his crewmates as we continue on through the rig as well, scattered across as he makes his way through. It wasn't looking good. Kaz eventually makes his way back up to the accommodation floor and meets back with Roy in the kitchen. Roy doesn't know what's going on, and he's seen something on the deck which scared the shit out of him. He's now hiding away in the pantry. This is a real conversation between two best friends, one scared shitless with what's going on and the other trying to make sense of everything that's going on. Honestly, the way the conversations are handled in this game are absolutely fantastic. Massive, massive credit to the writers and also the voice actors as well because they've made it very relatable. Kaz tried to get to the lifeboats to try to get the hell off this rig with Roy and any other survivors that are there. However, when he released the pins to lower them down, it was no use. So he made his way back to Roy. Kaz, however, along the way, seen something that really scared him, that would make everything that's happened seem extremely real. Trotz, another crew member, was taken over by whatever this thing is. Tell him not. Told him it's no right. Still in there. Kaz reunited with Roy and told him what he'd found. Trotz turned into this thing. Is this happening across the entire rig? Rennick, however, radioed on the tannoy, telling everyone to make their way to the helipad as soon as they possibly could. However, Roy isn't feeling too well. He needs his insulin, which was placed in his cabin by a colleague a few hours prior. Kaz will make his way to the chopper to stop Rennick from leaving whilst Roy goes to his cabin to collect his insulin and they'll meet at the chopper. However, when Kaz got outside, something was out there in the mist. A colleague named Muri, taken over by whatever this thing was, taking anyone and killing them in front of them. Kaz slips past Muri with the help of Ines and activated the crew lift. Ines didn't make it after that point but Kaz had to carry on forward as he made it up to the top he heard Rennick speak about leaving right now without waiting for anyone else Kaz only just got there onto the helipad and well the chopper left however something wasn't right with the chopper it didn't look like it was under control whatsoever the chopper turned back around and well it crashed straight into the side of the rig it's very apparent at this point in the game that Kaz didn't know anything about oil rigs he was just here to get away from the shit that he caused back home beating up Billy as we'd said at the start. He was only meant to be here for a few weeks until all of this blew over back home. However, Suze was seething with this decision. He would just get up and leave her and the two girls behind. But missing their school Christmas concert as well that he'd promised he'd go to. 
Kaz would leave tomorrow morning and Suze would give him the ultimatum. If he leaves, they're done. Kaz walks inside Rennick's office and the phone begins to ring. However, the power would cut in and cut out constantly. Kaz would need to make his way down to the bottom level of the rig and restart the generators, but that wouldn't be easy. Whilst in Rennick's office, we came across a letter from the police about us fleeing out there. That's why Rennick was so angry in the first place and why he called us into his office. We would continue to receive phone calls from different colleagues across the rig. Scooby's one was probably the most disturbing that I'd heard. Easy. What are you Who's here? Fuck. The hallways were dark. Everything taken over by whatever this thing was. And went round the corner. We found Rennick. Jesus fucking Christ! Kaz sprinted as fast as he could away from Rennick and finally he managed to get away. Kaz makes his way further down into the rig and it looks absolutely terrifying. Finley was down here already. The Bira has taken a lot of damage since it was infested with this thing. So we need to try and reset the protective relay inside the comms room. It started, then shortly after the generator failed. Kaz had to manually do a reset. And well, this doesn't sound promising. But then as Kaz got into the room, another one of those things. Kaz made his way inside the control room and does the reset, and it works. Finley is also here. She says that we've done it, so all we have to do now is restart the generator manually. The monster, however, came straight back into the room because of the noise, but the generator was working fine. There was, however, a faulty fuse we had to replace, and once this was done, we should have power across the rig. But one wrong step caused Adir, the monster, to hear us, so we had to sprint out of their ASAP. Jesus. The fuse was fixed and we sprinted back to the generator and it finally worked. Brody called us and here he tells us that the rig is starting to sink. We need to utilize the tension cables in each of the legs to try and buy us a bit of time. This conversation, however, is just so well done. It's not just someone telling you what to do. It's two friends having a chat and making the best of a bad situation, but being very real about what's going on. Neither of them know what these things are. They don't know where they've come from. They don't have weapons or machine guns or RPGs to shoot at these things. They are just trying to save themselves and get off this rig to do whatever they can to give them a fighting chance. So Kaz utilizes the tension cables in each of the legs to try and buy some time for them. Kaz raises the first tension cable and makes his way over to the second. However, that's in the pontoon and that is full of water and oil. Throughout this time, however, Kaz would start to hear things. It's almost like Kaz had psychosis. He was able to see things and hear things that were not really there. Could this be due to this thing through the water? As Kaz opens the floodgates, two bodies came rushing out. And Kaz had no choice but to swim under. This wasn't just oil, but a combination of oil and water. This whole thing could go up in flames in a matter of seconds if one spark touched it. The second winch is now complete. And whatever this thing is, it's messing with Cal's head. He can hear Suze in the background, and even the two girls at times as well. Kaz gives Roy a phone call when he gets to the surface to check if he's alright. Roy still doesn't have his insulin, and he's a bit all over the place because of that. Roy has to get to us now, but he needs to make his way to the cabin first to get the insulin shot for Roy. But then, as Kaz leaves, the phone rings again. But this time, it's no one on the rig. It's Suze, but it's a memory. This thing was playing with Kaz's mind. It was making him hear voices, seeing things. Suze was constantly on his mind, as she should be, 
but this place is filling up with water and is doing so fast. There was oil dripping everywhere. One spark in this place is a goner. Brody, however, was on top of the rig and we finally run into him. We need to deal with the stack because, again, one spark and this whole place is going up in flames. The flare shouldn't be looking like this, so we have to change it to the gas regulator in order to control the flame. Kaz makes it... Kaz makes his way to the top of the stack, but when he gets there, it doesn't work. He has to manually light the gas. Kaz gave Brody the confirmation that he could hear him and makes his way out there to manually light it with the Zippo lighter. And well, it was really intense. The stack, however, was about to collapse, so he had to sprint, but was knocked out in the process. Here we learnt more around the reason Kaz and Billy got into a fight. Billy liked Suze since school, and was jealous of Kaz because of the two girls they had together. Suze has had enough of this tough guy act, and she just wants this over and done with. She just wants Kaz to fix whatever this is so they can go on and live their life together again. We made our way to engineering again and finally come across Brody and Finley. They're both going to release the tension cables to try and float a bit higher before the entire rig sinks. However, Roy radios on the tannoy asking for help. Roy needed his insulin, which he still doesn't have. And we need to get it for him and take it to the rooftop on top of accommodation as quickly as we can. Kaz, however, runs into yet another crewmate, Trots. He managed to get away after getting Roy's insulin and made it to the roof, but when he found Roy, well, it wasn't good news at all. Roy died because he didn't get the medication he needed. It was of no one's fault. There was something patrolling the accommodation, so he just couldn't get it. And unfortunately, Roy passed away because of that. Don't leave me. Roy, don't leave me. I can't do this, man. I'm scared, Roy. I'm fucking terrified. What am I going to tell Sus? <laughs> I mean, she's going to fucking kill me, man. Man. She loved you, big man. So did my girls. Wait, what am I going to tell them? <laughs> oh, sorry. Your Uncle Roy's not coming home. Aye, I know. Me and Ollie. I love this big man, do you hear me? I love them. We speak to Finley and she tells us that we have to flood the pontoon to the brim. That's where Brody had gone to try and release the winches. This was the only way to try and keep the rig stable on the water so that we at least have some balance on all four legs. So this is what Kaz does. Kaz reaches Finley and well, she's on the phone to Brody and it doesn't seem good. Brody is stuck down into the pontoons after they were flooded. But this was no fault of ours or Finley's. This was something Brody knew needed to be happen and was all a part of the plan. He couldn't use his diving gear that he had because it wasn't just water. This was mostly oil that was filling up. And obviously that wouldn't work in terms of breathing. But Brody's content. He's ready. There's nothing to be done. I not fucking see that. I knew the rest when I came down here. Fuck. Can I lose you as well? Listen, I'm all right, Kaz. I'm... I'm already back on Sky. <laughs> You've never seen water like that, Kaz. Clear. Peaceful. <laughs> you just let go and... <laughs> everything's fine. Hi. That sounds beautiful. You go one day. Alright. <laughs> oh, no, fuck that. I'm never swimming again after this. <laughs> Kaz, you and Finley, you can do this, alright? I'm sure she wouldn't do something so stupid. Rory, you there? Kaz? Go stupid. Talk to me. <laughs> it's getting higher. 
Are you up here, Brody? I'm not going anywhere. Alright, I'm here. Brody. Brody. Jesus. Brody. How does this happen? Would they be there now, Finley? Doesn't it fucking matter? He's dead and you don't think that matters. He was always gonna die. Boy of them. Always. You see that? We were fucking about with the lake and pontoons. And we thought, I won't mail. Watch new pals turn into monsters. Never once. Never fucking once. We tried to do what needed to be done. Calm down, alright? What do you mean? I mean, I'm ending this. Fucking hell. Finley, no, come back. Finley! Kaz had to chase after Finley before she did something stupid, but just as she reached the top deck, the rig started to fall apart and, well, a piece of scaffolding fell onto her. Finley tells Kaz that she can hear her son just like Kaz can hear Sue's. But there's only one thing left for them to do, and it's to end it all here. If this thing gets back to land, then Kaz's two girls, Finley's son, are all going to be end up like this, like everyone else on this rig, and potentially end humanity as we know it. So Kaz does the one thing that he knew he needed to do. He walks straight inside the large growth that he'd spotted at the beginning of the game, to the very edge of the platform, Sorry, Zeus. So... So sorry. He took the Zippo lighter, dropped it into the void. Sorry, love. You know me. You could say that. It's been a long time, though, Kaz. Hold up. Susan Lafferty. Fuck's sake, is that you? The very same. Christ, Kaz, but you look no different. I've still got the nose, eh? <laughs> well, looks like someone did a good job of spreading it about your face. <laughs> Man a drink. Jesus, Cass. Because I really want to be thinking about Roy right now. <laughs> he looks after me. He fucking adores you, you know. Well, I am easy to love, Cameron McCreary. Yeah. I'm finding that. Shut up, great Suki Jim. I do, though, Suze. I fucking love you. I love you more than anything in this whole world. Did that fan pop? Are you not so bad yourself? All things considered. Marry me. You what? I'm serious. Marry me. We we'll make beautiful wings. I want to spend my whole life with you. She's perfect. She looks just like you. Thank God for that. <laughs> She's got your eyes though. <laughs> my dad's eyes. I'm sorry, Kaz. I know you'd have wanted him to meet her. Nah, fuck him. The bastard wasn't interested in me. Why would he care about her? He loved you in his way, Kaz. I'll never leave you, Susan. I'll be at your side forever. I'm always going to be here for this wind. What a fantastic game, ladies and gentlemen. This was a 10 out of 10 for me, and I enjoyed every single second of it.
Here's the wains for me. Tell them I'll be back for Christmas. I'm sorry, Suze. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below of this game and comment Roy down below if you've made it this far into the video. But leave a like if you have enjoyed. I'd be very, very much appreciated. I love these little games. And if there are any other games like this that you recommend me playing, then please leave them down below in the comments. I would love to play through some more of these and do some more videos on them for you guys. But have a great day, everyone. Speak soon and take care.